Shalom, everybody. Welcome and welcome. Glad you're here with us this evening. And uh, if you all did get to look at the email, you know we're going to talk about uh, unequally yoked. So, Heavenly Father, we bless you and thank you for your word and for, hallelujah, revealing to us what it is you want to teach us. So we yield ourselves unto you and ask you to clarify and verify and open up the eyes of our understanding so we can understand this even on a deeper level. So we just thank you, ask you to bless all of us, and hallelujah, in the name of Yahushua, hallelujah. All right, well, we're going to start out with this. We'll get right to it. Um, when I was looking looking at unequally yoked, of course, I came from the south, so we know what yoke, yoking uh, horses together in order for for my, my daddy to go to the field and, and plow, you know, plow the ground. And so um, he had to yoke up, you know, the horses together. He didn't yoke up uh, a horse and a cow because they would not, it would not work. Or you don't yoke up, uh, we could say, a doberman, one of these big dogs, and then get a little chihuahua and yoke them up together and expect them to work. And so um, so Father is letting us know to be unequally yoked is a real big problem. And even though this is kind of centered around marriage, we can think about everything else that pertains to us. So I'm going to read the scripture that, that we'll be coming from. It's uh, in 2 Corinthians 6. Starting at verse 14, do not become unequal, unevenly yoked. I'm reading from the scriptures book. Do not become unevenly yoked with unbelievers. For what partnership have righteousness with lawlessness? And what fellowship has light with darkness? And what agreement has Messiah with Belial? Or what part does a believer have with an unbeliever? And what union has the dwelling place of Elohim with idols? For you are a dwelling place of the living Elohim. As Elohim has said, I shall dwell in them and walk among them. And I shall be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says Yahuwah, and do not touch what is unclean, and I shall receive you. And I shall be a father to you, and you shall be sons and daughters to me, says Yahuwah the Almighty. Now back at verse 14, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up so that we can just share uh, from our hearts uh, what what we think about it, or if somebody want to comment before we even, we just let it open up that way. Verse 14, do not become unevenly yoked with unbelievers for what partnership have righteousness and lawlessness and what fellowship has light with darkness does anyone want to open it up and and begin the discussion or comment or something um i i would like to okay um this is your best thing like to bring in is when we're talking the topic is equally yoked um when we were talking about you know you were talking about husbands and wives obviously and um so there was something i was talking to minister brian with and i'm also minister brian's daughter um we were talking about how um you know, in the beginning of the book, how we had Adam and we had Eve, um, and how Eve was, you know, represented as the best friend, basically, of um, Adam. So a lot of times when we when we hear people and we see television and things like that, people don't people miss the whole best friend thing. A lot of people think a best friend means just somebody to just hang out with and, 
tell your secrets with, but based on the scriptures, a best friend is like your your partner, your husband, your wife, or it could it could also be family. Um, it could be your sister can be your best friend. Your parents can be your 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 best friend, not just somebody to share secrets with. People don't really understand the meaning of the word best friend. Um, but we see that, like I was saying, in, in the beginning, Father gave Adam a best friend. Um, so that might um, help a little bit with the topic. Um, Obviously, I know Mr. Bryan has some things, so he he would probably be able to add on to what I said. Well, that helps a lot. Hello. 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 Oh, shalom. Hey, how you doing? Oh, shalom. Yeah, we're trying to get rid of that word hello. I can't. Oh my goodness, shalom. It has now gotten rid of. <laughs> Greetings. Greetings. I mean, okay. Um, uh, when I think about unequally yoked, I, I think about uh, who in the scriptures can we find that was like that? Because I know that we we go to First Corinthians and we quote that scripture, but I, I like looking to see if there were people in the Bible where that happened with. And I know that, you know, the children of Israel were one because they were told not to intermarry with other, uh, the inhabitants of some of the other lands because, uh, if they did, then their sons and daughters would be led away by other gods, uh, of the people that they worship, just like what happened with Samson, um, which is one of the people, uh, he had many wives. Um, and even though he was one of the wisest men in the world in that time frame, the wives was un- his undoing because he was told not to do that. That was one of the commands that Father gave. And because he was unequally yoked with so many wives, they led him to astray to, to be with other gods. The second person that I can think of in the scriptures was Samson. Um, he repeatedly sought out unbelieving women, and the choices that he made was his destruction at the end. Even though he might have gotten revenge on the people, um, you could tell he was unequally yoked with the unbelievers. And both resulted in bad things to happen. Um, well, I think you can find that in Judges. And First Kings, I think it's like Judges 14, something like that, or and like First Kings 11, I believe. Um, but um, the the part where you know, what we weren't supposed to intermarry was uh, Deuteronomy 7, you know, three and four. Uh, I believe it said, you shall make no covenant with the people of the land and show no favor to them for more. You shall not intermarry with them for they will turn your sons away from following me to serve other gods. So this scripture is repeated in the New Testament just in different terms. Being unequally yoked, that's exactly what it means. You can refer back to the Deuteronomy and see the same exact thing. But those other people that you saw um, in the scriptures, um, they were unequally yoked, and it, and it resulted into something not right. Um, but if you can, if you are unequally yoked, it also said in the scriptures that if the person wants to still stay, then we are to honor that um, because we sanctify the wives and the husbands. Um, I believe that's right. Do uh, you agree with me, Rabbi? Yes, yes. Okay. Well, I'm going to hand this over to my wife because she has a few things that she would like to say as well. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, you know, my husband, this is Sister Regina. My husband Brian brought up Solomon and Samson, and the person I wanted to bring up is Lot. Um, his 
wife and his children, he had to have a hedge around them. Um, and then when that hedge was removed, uh, I said Lot, didn't I? I meant Job. I'm sorry. So, uh, you know, Job had that hedge around his family. But then when that hedge was removed, they were all killed from him. I think, what was it, just one servant survived, Brian? Yeah, it was like one servant. He was, and I think he was only kept alive just so he could bring the message to Job. Um, so, you know, if you're righteous enough to where you can have a hedge around your family, you know, that that's great, but as soon as that hedge is removed, you know, some bad things can, can happen to them. So it's risky to, to, I guess, believe or hope that you're righteous enough to keep that hedge at all times around them. So I just wanted to bring in that aspect of it as well. If you are unequally yoked, you've got to be able to have a hedge around them to protect them. And uh, that's the end of my comment. And in, in the... And the hedge can be the sanctification if the wife is is saved and the husband is not, or vice versa. That can be the hedge that that's around it, the uh, the the marriage. Um, if they are, uh, but but let's just say like me and Dad, for instance, we we when we were married, well, I wasn't. Looking for Jesus, I, I thought God, God was in my heart and all that, and He's and it, same with Him. So, so we weren't like what you call born again. So I guess we were two people that that got married and we believe in God, but somewhere along the line, I I got saved, and then all of a sudden I had a situation. I thought that here my husband wasn't being saved right along with me. So when I saw that in the scripture. I went to father and say, well, what am I supposed to do with this? Because I love my husband. And he he said, uh, you, you are to be a light in the house, meaning don't go preaching to him. Just live your life. And, uh, of course, he's not trying to go anywhere. Um, and so that, that's, that's the, what happened with that is that, you know, eventually, uh, dad, dad was saved and, um, we both, um, you know, I used to like to have my um, my wine and stuff, and Dad would have his scotch. So somehow that that all began to disappear. And I like what uh, Sister Bethany. Well, I like what everybody said already. I like what Sister Bethany when she brought in the friend part, uh, because Dad Dad was my friend. I could I could say anything to him. So that friendship and everything, you know, helps to keep everything uh, uh, everything intact because when you have a friend and you have things in common, it, it, it makes a great difference in your life so that we were not running one way. I didn't say to him, listen, I, I'm not smoking anymore. Uh, you better not smoke anymore. I didn't say that. I just didn't smoke anymore. Or father took it. Same thing with the food, the pork. Uh, I didn't give it up. Father took it, but I didn't bother Dad. I just kept right on, um, you know, cooking for him and, and, and my sons, whatever they wanted. So I never did say uh, uh, negative things to him because I was listening to the spirit of Father and what he was telling me to do and how to do it. And so anyway, that might help somebody. So that trust, that friend, that all of that makes a difference uh, when you are unequally yoked in a in a situation. And the man, yes, I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's okay. That's okay. no, no. Go ahead. I, I was just going to say I definitely agree with what you're saying because my grandmother was my best friend until I met Brian, and then you know he became my best friend, and we were friends for several years before we got married. So, um. We are blessed in our culture here that we actually get the opportunity to befriend our future mate first. Back in the day, you didn't get that. They were arranged marriages, and you just got what you got. And, 
you know, you, you just had to really hope the person was truly where, you know, they were supposed to be. And if not, you know, you really had to work on each other and, and, and you had to forge a friendship after being married. And I could just imagine how difficult that was because a lot of these people didn't even know each other at all before they got married. They didn't meet until their wedding day. You know, so I, I'm, I'm happy that in this culture we have the opportunity to do that because it does show great results. People who are friends first, they seem to have the happier, longer marriages. Um, what's that, Brian? Yeah, and he was saying equally yoked, exactly. So I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to no, give back to you. No, that, that was good. That was uh that was good. Well, I know when I was dating, you always had chaperones there. I mean, my dear, I mean, they would be, they weren't in the living room with you, but anyway, I won't go there, cause, uh, you know, I want that maybe anybody else want to comment or y'all have additional comments to add? I know when I was looking at this, I, I didn't give you time to, Comment, but anyway, let me put another thing. I was looking at this, and I not only put husband and wives in it, but I also put in friends and people you hang out with. It all seemed to to come together because you don't have anything in common. Uh, you you're not gonna you're not going to have a a good relationship. And some of this works like with us that are on this ancient path, and and others that are not not uh, not embracing. Uh, the Sabbath, so that, you know, what keeps us together is the Holy Spirit, the Word, and the, and the Creator until we can come into that unity and into that oneness. But, hallelujah. Let me, let me see if someone else, uh, you all have further comments on it? I know we all have been, 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 uh, involved with what, unbelievers? Yep. <laughs> That's true. Shalom. Okay. Shalom. Shalom. This, this is Sister Mary. Good evening, Sister Mary. Buenas noches. Yes, buenas noches. Well, I definitely have looked at this passage of Scripture before, and um, it it's pretty, well, when my husband and I got married we we were I think sounds like you and and um, your husband rabbi we were not um, really following any I mean we you know we believed in God we believed in Jesus but we weren't walking that path so we were pretty much on the the same path of that together and and then um, I, several years into our marriage, this felt, um, leading to, to begin going to church and, uh, bringing, getting our children involved and getting, uh, you know, educate, you know, Bible study and things like that. And, um, then gave my life to the Lord in, 1997, I believe it was, and so, and I, at, at around the same time, my husband was professing that as well, um, and for a little while, it, it seemed to be good. We were um, about at the same level, and but then he he dropped off and. There were a lot of struggles out of that, and I didn't understand what happened to him, and even had enough to just didn't have enough knowledge at that time, and really thought that, and I I didn't know how to handle it. I say handle it according to the word, um, because I was still trying to kind of be in both camps, which I know, you know, is wrong. So there were there was a lot uh, of turmoil and strife in our marriage. And uh, so he left. Um, he did leave. And 
I, he had threatened to leave us many times. And finally, I just said, well, I didn't want the marriage to end, um, but I was kind of tired of him threatening me all the time. So, and I knew that one scripture, which we was referred to, you know, if you have an unbelieving spouse and they want to leave, let them go. And so at this point, I just kind of thought, well, he seems to be an unbeliever, so I'm going to do that. And I I struggled with then, um, you know, should I divorce him? And I, pray, I took it before the Lord, and he said, no, I'm going to restore your marriage. And I thought, wow. Okay, well, uh, I believe you, and I believe you, Father, and just have to show me how to do this. And he um, had me to read Hosea, and that, from reading Hosea, that really gave me a picture of how I was to stand and to pray. And so when... um, Regina was talking, Sister Regina was talking about the hedge. Um, he, Father gave me Hosea 2, verses 6 and 7, and it, it talks about, um, it says, therefore, I will block her path. Well, I, I, put, I insert my husband's name in there, and with thorn bushes, I will wall him in so that he cannot find his way. He, he will chase after his lovers, but not catch them, and he will look for them and not find them, and then, after that, he he will say, I will go back to my wife and put my name in there, Mary, as at first, for then I was better off than now. And so I pray that uh, in faith and, and believing that that Father is working that out uh, to answer that and to bring him home and how I am to love him and to, when he does come in and then, he goes back, um, but it's always the same. Now, I don't always get it right because I have emotions and I, I'm i learning, um, but there is a – Father has given me a blueprint for how to do this, and I'm so thankful um, because it can be very confusing and very um, – well, I'll just say confusing to, to know, you know, how do I do this? And so I'm just thankful. Um, so to go to speak to the scriptures that we're studying, I mean, it, it is it is very difficult, and it is still difficult, you know, to deal to to deal with with people, and especially when it's your spouse whom you love, and you know, oh, you're like, you know, you just want to shake them and like come to your senses, and what are you doing, and all that kind of thing. But I those words mean nothing to him pretty much. It's like they fall to the ground, so I have to do it. I have to do it Father's way. Um, but to really, for people who are considering marriage or considering a friendship, and I, I like what Sister Bethany said, because we can get entangled in, in these ungodly relationships, ungodly soul ties, not just with a male-female relationship, but friend to friend you know, platonic friends, um, family members, and things like that. So it is very important to pray and to ask Father how. Um, so some, I mean, you can limit your your um, relationship with a lot of people, but sometimes there are some people that, that you have, you interact with on a daily basis. Um, but to really be like a friend thing, I think that's something to be very careful about because the, of the influence and, and you know, you want to be on the same path. So, wow, I said a lot, but hopefully that will help someone in, in this particular situation um, that they find them. Oh. Did, you, did you finish? I think so. Yes, yes. But, but Mary, uh, that's good that you did share all of that because we are looking at the marriages, but we are also looking at our people and 
they they are the, the believers are not to be running around all the time with unbelievers, and that this is all part of it. And we have young young people coming up. We have unmarried people, and uh, if the rules are not laid down, then you know they think they may they may think they can buddy out with anybody, and it just doesn't work. Mm-hmm. As uh, Minister Brian had uh, opened up by sharing about Solomon, and we all know that um, because they were not he, he wasn't equally yoked with all these many women that he, he the, the ten tribes was taken away from him. And that's a lot, and uh, and so uh, and with Samson, we see we all know that story about Samson and those. Uh, women that he was attracted to and we knew when father created these people that they would they would do these things and that he was going to use them as examples to us not not to follow the uh those particular kind of examples because it it causes a problem and then Job was the other you know example that was given if if they were all right then why why the, the, the family all, you know, lost their lives and things because the hedge was removed. Mm. And, you know, that was very wow. important, you know, for us to also uh, keep in our minds because even, even on the line, we don't, we don't know who's on the line. Well, I mean, what, what anybody is going through on, unless, unless they say something. We could, you know, have uh, or, you know, we, we, we want to get clarity because, I mean, even more so that we know even with the unequally within the marriage and one saved and one is not saved and he choose to separate and go somewhere. He can separate, he can go somewhere, he can divorce, but he's still not allowed to marry anybody. No matter what mm-hmm. happened, no matter which way you look, these rules that father laid down is until death to do you part. And then, mm-hmm. you know, there are a lot of people that say they don't they don't care about father, but then they they got the scriptures, and stood up before the pastor or whoever they went. They had some witnesses, and so all these witnesses verified that. And so then we have uh, my son, Minister Brian, on here. That I didn't hear him say to me that that his wife only got to know father after they got married. We know that that both of them learn and and discovered and adjusted but before she got married uh, uh sister regina got married they know what she knew what she knew she was getting into a believing family and and, and her she came from family that also believes in god and jesus so so when they entered it wasn't like dad and i and you all correct me because you're all on this line and so, so that that was kind of rare, because you know, from where I grew up, I, I don't think people was trying to find out whether they knew Jesus. People just went to church and came home, and, and I don't remember people picking up Bibles and and sitting around having Bible study. That that's where I came out of. And but but they went to church. We went to church religiously, so to speak. And so this this amazed me. You know, when I, when I got saved and Father began to open up the eyes of my understanding. And, and, and none of it is easy. But Father have us, the old, older women here that have had a, a wonderful marriage that we are able to share our testimonies to the younger one to say this is what we did. Doesn't mean they're going to do it exactly how, how I did in my home. Or how Dad and I worked together, and our, our sons had to be working together with us, which means that our children were not going around. I didn't hear them grumbling about what happened to their mother and and her changing and all of that. They, um, uh, Minister Brian, as young as he was, he he when I was kind of upset because I wanted everybody to hurry up, but remember, Father had his hand on me. Well, anyway, y'all stop if you have, want to say something here. But Father had his hand, and he kept me in the scriptures. And so uh, when I I was whining a little bit, and and Brian, as young as he was, you know, put me aside and said, Ma, 
be glad that we are not all in other churches and you would have to we would we would be and he didn't use the word entrenched but he meant you would be in churches and then wouldn't believe like you would believe and then you would have a real situation he he said just mom just just give us time and dad they all said the same thing at different times and in different ways and so because of the love and the and the family and everything uh my family never gave me a hard time they they only said be patient with us uh, um you know we're not there yet or whatever and and it worked out all the advice that they gave me to help me along the path kept me strong because dad never complained even when my hair disappeared up under the little the little dolly then you know my most of the hair was out you just put the dolly on your head he didn't complain when my when I my dresses start getting longer never complained then when I was sent here to Charlotte and then had to tie my hair up completely never complained he never complained about mm, excuse me a minute um Whew. Dad never complained, and neither did and neither did our sons. They didn't complain. I never heard my daughter-in-law complaining. If she did, and there were things she disagreed with, she had a husband, and 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 they would talk of whatever situation she would have. She never gave me the impression that. Oh boy. Oh Bob, well help me out you uh ha, 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 ha. praise you yeah. Well and and that all came through being you you have to stay close to father. This is what I mean, not implying that people you weren't close to him, but he, he literally anointed me in a, for a particular call, like we all have particular calls, and he literally put me in his word and that's where I stayed. I had nobody to go ask anything because my life was had taken on a different path. My my friends were Christians and I thought all mine was Christian too, but then I discovered if I was on a path with the Sabbath, I won't go there, but but that's all right. I I have some friends that still love me although they don't understand what's going on with me. So anyway, I hope that helps somebody. I forgot to look at the time. Anybody, if you have something, I might have to count and wait in case you want to share something. I got kind of emotional there, but yeah. Um, everybody has brought a piece of the puzzle uh, that I that I like about um, this this kind of change from a study to. Um, experiences that is uh, I, I like it more than what we would do with a study uh, for, t- for this time um, because this is real things that have happened in people's lives and um, like what Mary had said what, what is so important about what she's saying um, what, what happened in her situation is that it's it's something that people can actually take and absorb it. And then she looked in the scriptures to try to find her answers. And I believe in, when she started doing that, then then things started happening in her life differently. Um, the reason why I'm saying this is because I, what I see in relationships is when the man and the woman are starting to have problems, they start to go outside of their marriage to their friends, that some of their friends are, uh, some of them are unbelievers, some of them are believers. Um, but the whispers 
is is where the issues start coming from. Uh, because if they don't have a strong foundation and they believe what they see on television, which happens a lot, um, they'll give wrong information. So I'll, I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. If you have somebody that has three failed marriages, it's probably not the person that you would want to go to to get marriage advice. But with Mary's experience that she had, she is the ideal person because she's living and going through something, and she was telling us that she looked in the scriptures in order to find her answers. Um, but when you when you are around people that are going through similar um, experiences, a lot of times we find strength in there, but then we start seeing, you know, little. You know, I, I wouldn't say discrepancies, but little chinks in the armor, kind of. You see the, you know, they might not be as strong as as you think, and you, the people go back and forth with each other and their experiences, but yet the scriptures are left out. Fathers kind of left out. I mean, we they they want father to to fix things, but like. The sister said, there's a blueprint in there, and if we follow the blueprint, you know, we we test the spirit to see if the stuff that he promised us will come true. And that's what's so great about what I'm hearing tonight in, the, in, these, different, in these different aspects of being unequally yoked. Um, but I, I've seen somebody that, decided to get married again, but the, he, the marriage counselor that he was with, his, his, his marriage failed. And I was like, that's the person you're listening to? You know, I, it doesn't make any sense to me. I said, is he a believer? Does he understand? Well, no. I said, okay, so you went to an unbelieving marriage counselor that had their marriage fail, and that's the person that's counseling you? I said, what about your brother that's the minister? How come you didn't ask him any questions? Yeah, I just I just think it's interesting. But the whispers is is where the problem comes in for the, the the man and the wife. The friends, listen, if I was you, I would do thus and so. If that's the way your wife is, I would go get somebody else. That's that's the things that these people say. That's not scriptural. And that doesn't sound like you love your wife. I was I was reading something to my daughter the other day about, and I know everybody knows the Proverbs 31 woman. That's what we classify it as now, right? The Proverbs 31 woman, mm-hmm. who can find them, a good wife. Uh, right. But I use, uh, but I like verse 30, and that uh, it says, "Charm is deceptive." And beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears Yah is to be praised. The charm is deceptive is one of the things that happens to people that that something happens to their marriage. Some male or female, they know how to charm or say certain things. To, to entice or, or to tempt. And the, the way you can tell that is, you know, we've heard of pickup lines before, right? All of yeah. us, I think, have heard that, right? Yeah. Um, that, that, that's what you call charm is deceptive. The reason why the person comes with the pickup line is so that they can impress whoever they're, whoever they're talking to. And there is something behind what they want. The better the pickup line, the better your chances with something. So that's where the charm is deceptive. The beauty is fleeting is when women start getting older and they don't have the useful look like they do and the guys start looking at others and they start having a problem because, you know, the beauty is is the issue. I think we've had this conversation before. But what keeps people together is finding Father and finding the Scriptures and you know, doing the fruits of the Spirit 
and practicing it and practicing it and practicing it until they've got something positive. And I believe that when I was listening to Mary and, of course, you, Mom, um, or Rabbi, sorry, mm -hmm. um, uh, I see the, the passion that you, you, you just really want to be happy. You, you want Father in your life first because that's what it says in the scriptures, and you just want wholeness. And I think you had mentioned soul ties before. It is, mm -hmm. it is something else. It is something else. When, when you become one flesh with the person and, and you love them, it, you cannot let those people go. You just can't because you, you have a bond with them. So um, I, I truly understand um, the things that you're saying. I just wish that um, the decisions that I made in my life, you know, were different as well when I was younger. But that's a whole other story. Um, but, you know, I see, I see these people with, with men and women, and they wonder why they can't stop thinking about the people. And, it, and it's because of that, that one flesh saying is, is – is binding, and and that's what we're supposed to be with the Messiah. We're supposed to be one with him, and when you have a mate that's one with him as well, it's it's just very glorious. But the friends um, haven't met many true friends besides my my wife and my my children and, and the people at home in prayer. Because uh, they're my brothers and sisters, but do I hang around and, and and go out with a whole bunch of people? Nah, I don't, uh, because you know I know where a lot of the people are at, and I know Father would not be pleased um, unless unless I'm ministering to the people, unless I'm trying to bring the word to somebody. That's that's a whole different story, but um, being equally yoked with people. I mean, I know where I stand a lot of the time you know, when I'm amongst people. They don't understand, you know. But I, I talk with them all the time. But I, I understand the mindset um, that they still haven't gotten in a place in their lives where they understand. So um, I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. So I, I talk to the people at the job, having a good conversation about Father. We start talking about the programs on TV. You know, then then we start telling them, you know, they start talking about, well, uh, Supergirl is a, a pretty good, wholesome uh, thing to watch. And I said, uh, but the sister was gay in there, and the, um, and the uh, other person, uh, the Supergirl said that everything's all right and it should be. I said, how is that wholesome? And he said, well, besides that, you know, it's, it's a pretty good show. And I said, but you're uh, a believer, right? <laughs> I said, you, you, no, no, I mean, seriously, because everything else was good. Everything else was, was very good when I was talking with him. And, and they would have got to that, you know, so I brought that up. So he brought up another thing that he thought was good. And I said, but there were two females in there that were doing the same thing as they, they did in Supergirl. Um, he said, well, yeah, but they only did that once. I said, well, was there huh. anything else? Because we, cause we stopped looking at it, and they said, well, yeah, there were two guys that were doing stuff too. I said, okay, well, when, when is it that you're going to stop looking at it? So he said, well, the story is really good. And I said, oh, okay. That's the hook. That's the, that's the hook. Yes, that, that right. is the hook. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And it didn't matter whether I told him that I stopped watching it. As soon as I saw stuff like that in there, I stopped watching it. My family stopped watching it. And he just kept saying the storyline is really, really good. And I said, okay. I said, but you're watching two people doing that, right? I mean, 
I said, let, let me ask you, don't you have problems when there's sex scenes that are in the, in the, uh, uh, in some of these things? They're very graphic. I mean, do you still watch them or do you turn it off? And he said, well, no, I, I don't watch those. And I said, but the scenes with the, the, the same sex people, that you'll watch. I said, well, okay. And then he said, well, you know, everybody, I said, listen. That you don't have to say anything. Uh, I'm not. I'm not trying to judge you. I'm just. I'm just trying to understand the the difference between the two things. It's like one is desensitized, and the other one you 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 think that that's bad. You you think that's a worse sin than the other one. So I'm just curious about that. So I said that. You, I said you don't have to answer me. I, I already got my answer. I already understand. No, I get it. And then I said, I cannot, uh, if I ever went to the movies with this person, you know, i got to make sure that the movies are, you know, have, you know, positive things in it and, and no sexual content and, and, and those things because if he ta ever wants to take me to a movie, you know, he'll probably say, well, that's okay because they're just acting. Yeah, you know, just let I me mean, just a lot of a lot of things like that, a lot of compromising. So, mm. so I told him, well, I just don't watch the show. Period. I just stopped looking at it. And he said, oh, okay. So he still watches the show, but he talks about father all the time. <laughs> huh. So, but uh, that that's what that's what happens sometimes. So you need to say something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. I just wanted to, to add on, um, being unequally yoked can also be a motivation. Uh, and I'll use myself for an example. Uh, when my husband and I were engaged, uh, you know, we, we it was like a year as friends and two years engaged. Uh, during that time, I made a lot of changes in my life to become more equally yoked with him where he was, uh, for example, I was smoking cigarettes and, and drinking alcohol and, um, you know, also on the weekends, you know, I could go out to the uh, dance clubs, stuff like that. And, you know, he had told me early on um, that if you're going to smoke, don't do it around me. You know, so if we were out somewhere, I would have to go outside and he was not going to go with me. You know, because he totally did not support the cigarettes. So I'd have to go out. And, and I started thinking to myself, I'm out here taking time I could be spending with him so I could come out here and smoke a cigarette. You know, so that started motivating me, okay, I, I need to let the cigarettes go because I'm wasting time out here with this bad habit when I could be spending time with him. And so that motivated me to get rid of the cigarettes. And and the alcohol, you know, once we were engaged, he let me know, um, you know, if we do get married, I don't want anything to do with alcohol. I don't want it in my home. I don't ever want you. Uh, well, let's tell them exactly what I said. Well, you tell them that. I said I'm not marrying anybody <laughs> that is going to have a drinking problem or smoke. Yes. I said, so as far as being friends, I said, I don't have a problem with that. I said, but if we got serious, then that stuff would have to go if if we were going to uh, be more than friends. Yes. I said, but I'm not marrying anybody that's doing that. I'm just letting you know up front. Well, and, and he meant it, too. But I knew early on that I wanted to marry him. So I, I, I knew I had to make a choice. I couldn't still have the alcohol and nightclubs and all that. It had to go. If I truly wanted to marry him, I had to get myself more right. So um, I, I didn't fully understand things as much as I do now. I mean, nowhere near where I am now. But, you know, I, I told someone recently, if you want to, and this is for the people who haven't been married, um, if you want that righteous man, you got to be righteous first because father is un it's, it's not impossible. Father has his own will. We know he, he works in his own mysterious ways. 
But you are going to greatly increase your chances of having that righteous man if you are righteous. You know, Father wants to put righteous with righteous because we're talking about being unequal yoked. So in my own personal example, I was unequally yoked with some, some things, and I had to get myself right before I could even get this man that I wanted to marry. And uh, by the way, I had always said I would never get married, but uh, something happened there. That was Father, <laughs> you know. I was never getting married, never having kids. So now it's now it's what nineteen years later, two kids later. But <laughs> but yes, yeah, so that's an example of you know somebody could be unequally yoked, and it served as a motivation to get you more equally yoked with that person. Yeah. Wow, that was great. Yes, hallelujah. Well, I guess we're coming to a conclusion as uh, as my son said, this this is well, this is truly not the way I thought we were going to go, but it it's the way we went. And um it's a it, it is it is wrong for believers to join with the wicked and profane. So uh I see we've seen the the um example of um of Sister Regina and Brian, and within the marriage, is with uh, dad. Dad wasn't fighting against what I was doing, and uh, he was apparently really watching, you know, to see what difference it was making. And so, uh, in that that friendship, it, friendship means a lot. And so, uh, what Father is continues to telling us, you know, if if you if you are yoked up with with a, with a with somebody that that's always drinking and partying and this your friend, and you're gonna you're gonna just you know try to uh, fellowship with them, that just doesn't work because that's two different worlds going on. One is one is born again and talking from the spirit, and the other is not born again. So you got the father of lies dwelling with with uh, the father of truth. I'm talking about those that are not trying to change. If you look at it at that, that that can be a great big war within the household. And so so if one is not doing what Father is telling us, that's a real problem because there's no way to break it down if if there's no one Father can work through. So, you know, my heart always go out to those that are standing for their marriages now. And I'm coming to a conclusion. Um, um, son, anything you want to say or anybody want to say in conclusion of of uh, this tonight. Uh yeah, just one last thing. Um if you if you looked at the movies in the past, right? And mm-hmm. you see that they used to have like two friends, let's just say two two female friends and they call themselves the best friends. One is Christian and the other is kinda wild. And you always see them go to these parties and the Christian person is the one that tries to talk to the wild person out of stuff, but most of these, most of these movies, the Christian person always gets killed. Have you, have you, has anybody, has anybody yeah, ever known that? Absolutely. And a wild, and, and wild uh-huh. person lives, and and they're like, and they're like, wow, they just like set that person up for 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 a fall. Or you see that when the, there are demons in there, it seems like the either the Baptists are crazy. It seems like the Catholics have no power, and and the other people are just walking up and down the street with big crosses in their hands, <laughs> and and that's how they de- depict them. Any any time a Catholic person tries to take a demon out, it, it, that it, it never just seems to work. There's there's no power at all that would father uh, that the demons and everything is is super strong, and uh, until the end of the story, uh, somebody that's just a good person. Yeah, without father, just a good person. They're the ones that that are able to exercise the demon. I, I just think that's just the weirdest stuff. But it it always happens. The 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 Christians or believers or or whatever have you, they get horribly killed. And so uh, definitely, if I was one of the actors in there, I would like. Uh, I don't know who I want to be. Do I want to be the, the Do I want to be the believer or do I want to be the uh, the the person that's wild, um, but that's but that's what they do, right? In in these flicks, you you're confused. Absolutely. Because 
like I had said one other time, you have some bad cops that are in the movie, and then you have people that are trying to rob a bank. And that's what the movie's about. So who do you choose to root for in it? The bad cops that, that kill people or the thieves that are trying to steal something and get away with it? Then you have to ask yourself, the heck am I watching this movie for? That's it. When they're both, when, when they're both bad, right? That's yeah. it. Well, we, we take the lesser of the two evils, right? Yes. And and that's the compromise that, that we do as believers sometimes. We take the lesser of the two evils. We we can convert them. We can fix them. Uh, because, right, isn't, isn't that what we do? That's what we uh, try to do. It's just a natural thing, isn't it? Yes, uh-huh. it's a natural thing. And, and here's another thing I, I, I see as well. Innocent, innocent. Uh, it can be a husband trying to kill his wife, and a neighbor just happened to see it trying to do a good thing. This might not be what, what you're talking about, but it's all part of how the, the people out there set us up, and so that the, the, the innocent neighbor gets killed, or the or the or the yeah. people that are trying to do right. They are the one that end up losing their lives just because they were associated with those that was working for the devil. Mm. Yeah. And and you see this and 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 uh, you see this uh, you see this all the time. And I don't care. It's like somebody said, "Well, I don't watch anything on the television." Well, I'll turn to something to just watch to see the commandments and apply them, and then see how. Uh, uh, unbelievers in, in the movie never seem to quite get the warnings that people try to tell them that somebody is not right. And that happens over and over again, and this happens in real life. People do not heed the warnings. That's why we try to sh- uh, share with our younger people what to watch out for, because we've been out there. We know you know that the well, we know that the enemy uses a lot of people, and they look good, smell good, and say good things. But oh my goodness, when something comes along that they don't like, the evil comes out. Mm-hmm. And so and this happens all the time. But anyway, I don't think I took it off track because I think all of this still, it's still what what does light have to do with darkness? How can you run around yeah. with somebody? That that's uh, that's an assassin, and 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 but just because you say, well, you know what, he's all right, uh, uh, or run around with a, your friend, your friend is a homosexual or an adulterer or a fornicator or a liar, and you have to, unless you witness to him, and unless there's something going on with the father, and I think you all know this, how in the world are you gonna run around? What can you say to him? They're not listening to you. They don't want to have nothing to do with you. In fact, if you get it in your head, they hate you. And if you mm-hmm. find somebody that lie all the time and they don't even know they're lying, you really have to keep your eyes on them because you know that the enemy throwing stuff at their brain. Or if they're fornicating or if they're stealing, it all goes the same thing. You're alert and you pray for them. If it's a brother or a sister, you're not even supposed to eat with them. But anyway, let's, let, let me close this off, you all. I, uh, well, this went farthest way. This is from uh, Matthew Henry's concise uh, commentary, and it said, It is wrong for believers to join with the wicked and profane. The word unbeliever applies to all destitute of true faith. True pastors will caution their beloved children and the gospel not to be unequally yoked. The fatal effects of neglecting scripture precepts as to marriages clearly appear. Instead of a help meet, the union brings a snare. Those whose cross it is to be unequally united without their willful fault may expect consolation under it, but when believers enter into such unions against the express warnings of God's word, they must expect more, 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 they must expect more distress. The caution also extends to common conversation. We should not join in friendship and acquaintance with wicked men and unbelievers. Though we cannot wholly avoid seeing and hearing and being with such, yet we should never choose them for friends. We must not defile ourselves by converse with those who defile themselves with sin. Come out from the workers of iniquity and separate from their vain and sinful pleasures and pursuits. 
from all conformity to the corruptions if of this present evil world, if it be an ended privilege to be the son or daughter of an earthly prince, who can express the dignity and happiness of being sons and daughters of the Almighty? And here, I just before we get off the line, now you know many of us have family members and things that you just simply cannot avoid them. So you know Father has given you the ability through using the example of Job, I believe, uh, that Job was always praying for his children, and we're going to say, you know, apparently they weren't doing some things right. And so he gave us that, I believe, so that we would, you know, we would not be reading things like, oh, I can't even talk with my my son. I can't even talk with my daughter. We are to, as uh, was said earlier, Nehemiah say, fight for your family. And Father oh, is yeah. letting us know, hallelujah, that this this stuff exists in our family. We got all kinds of different people in here, and they don't believe like we do. And, and so Father uh, set us in solitary and family so that he can bring out those that are in chains. And that, and so I, I rely on that. So I pray as uh, I wrap this up, you all, um, that uh, that we did get something out of, of what we share tonight, if no more than could confirm it even more. And we do have younger, a younger representation of a younger generation on this line. And I, and I pray that, you know, that, that Father is making these things clear so that they will continually be equipped with what they need to watch out for uh, the, the adversary or watch out for those that they feel uncomfortable. If we feel uncomfortable with someone, we need to be alert uh, because Father is, is giving us discernment to, to stay away from particular people because they'll bring you down, they'll bring in other things with you. And if, you, if your faith is weak, then you'll end up not understanding. You'll end up thinking it's all right to go and marry two and three and four and five times because you will be hanging out with people. So I thank Father for you standing, Mary. Sister Mary, I thank Father for uh, uh, even if there are times come when a question may come, because it comes to me even with this calling, but that's all right because it doesn't linger there long enough to do any damage because the word comes along and just move it out of the way. And Father, remind you again and all of us to stand on our promises. And all of us on this line, we have different um different uh, story parts of our lives that we share, you know, as, as Father opened each one of us up. And it's to encourage and help us each to grow and to grow stronger and to know people need to know that, uh, I'm going to say this in a moment, they need to know that there, there, there are good marriages out there. People need to know that because I've heard people say over and over again, I, I, they don't, they don't, there are nobody out there that's not arguing and bickering and chattering on. I'm saying to myself, I don't remember Dad and I arguing and bickering. I remember Dad saying, well, where's the phone bill, stuff like that. But I said, they don't know what they're talking about. So there are good marriages. So we're going to close it. we we'll close this off. And just by thank you, Heavenly Father, I just thank you for everybody that participated. Hallelujah, whether if they were on the, the line and and uh, they didn't say anything, their participation was still there in, in the heart and mind and soul. Hallelujah. And we just want to thank you for what you share with us tonight and to reinforce uh, the fact that light needs to hang out with light. And, 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 and together when we are reaching out to those in darkness, we are, we are strong. Father, send them out two by two. We can't even be intercessors on this phone except except we have things that we have more things in common than not, and that's the spirit of Father, that's the word of the living God, and that's the creator, and that's what sustains us through the faith Father has given us. So continue to bless them, Father. Give them a good night, uh, a rest tonight, and we want to thank you for what you've shared with us, um, the uh, being unequally yoked. Uh, so we thank you and Yahushua. All right, you all. Well, I'm going to say good night to, to everybody. And those that are going to be on the line, you know how I do it. I'm going to turn their audio off and I turn it back on. If you're going to be here to pray with me, I'll see you in a minute, a second or two. Shalom, everybody.
Shalom.